So let's move on to tactics. All the tactical tips I can give you on, on playing a drop shot. So first of all, you don't want to play a drop shot far behind the baseline or even behind the baseline unless it's a perfect situation because of course your ball flies longer in the air and your opponent has more time to get it. So if I show you a few, you few shots that uh, are not played right, so let's say I don't want to play a drop shot from here. It's flying really long, so flying, 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 flying down. So very long time. So if you're if you're behind the baseline, then okay, you play slice. You keep the ball deep. Yes. And if I get a shorter ball, I have to read the ball. Then I get a shorter ball, and here is about the right position where I can start playing drop shots. So as soon as soon as I can get into the court, I can play here the drop shot. The second thing to keep in mind in terms of tactics is how are you going to play a drop shot because drop shot can be played two different ways. One way is that you aim very short which I don't recommend and the second one is that you play a bit longer. So I will explain when I play. So if I play very short so we keep the rally so we start the rally and I will wait for the opportunity. So let's say if I want to play very short, I have to go very high. So maybe I'll just play so I'll play one ball and now if I am aiming very short like this and that will give you a lot of pleasure. You'll be very happy because you played the shortest drop shot in the country on that day. It's also the riskiest one. First of all, because you have to find this trajectory, it's very difficult to find. And second of all, is because it's easy to read. So if you play a, any type of a bit experienced tennis player, they will react immediately. They will start running immediately as soon as they see the ball coming a bit more up. So this, this drop shot is very easy to read, even if you kind of try to disguise it. An experienced player will see it very, very quickly. So I'm going to play it again. So I'll, I'll try and play it. So first we rally this one, not yet. Next one, so this is a normal ball. And then if I try to play very short drop shot, which I made again, you can see that the trajectory has to be high. So yes, I can play very short, but it's very, very risky and very easy to see. So. If my ball was any deeper, then I am uh, finished. So the other type of uh, drop shot I can play, I will show on the forehand, is I'll play a forehand slice and you just observe the trajectory of the ball. So you see it it's kind of has a normal height over the net. And if I go now like this, it's much harder for the opponent to see the change in the ball flight that this ball is shorter. So. Yes, my, my drop shot is longer, but they're going to see it later. So feel free to experiment what you're going to do. You have to read sometimes the situation, which one is better. If you're in a very favorable position where your opponent is stretched out wide and all you have to do is hit a drop shot there and you know they can't get it, then play this type of drop shot because it's safer. It's not so risky. You're just pushing the ball short there. Do not try to hit very high trajectory and very short drop shot. Another thing to keep in mind tactically and mentally is that drop shot is a double-edged sword, which means if you don't play it well, you will likely lose the point. So if I play it too short, I'm going to hit the net, I lose the point. If I'm going to play it too high and too long, my opponent is going to get an easy short ball and I will likely lose the point. So that means when you're playing a drop shot, you must be very calm and cool and collected and be able to execute a shot with precision because this is a very precise shot. So which means you don't want to play drop shots when you're nervous because it is very unlikely that you're going to achieve such precision that's necessary to hit the ball well. 
So when should you play a, a drop shot? You should play when you don't feel stressed, when you, your, the score is favorable to you. So let's say you want to play a drop shot, maybe a first point of the game when you really don't feel any pressure and maybe you're ahead in games or you're equal, maybe it's 3 all or something like that. So you must check just with yourself how you feel. And, but usually players feel you know, not very stressed when they're ahead in the game, let's say 40 love or 40-15. So if I have if I have 40 love and I've I've played the point and I'm now looking for an opportunity maybe to play the right ball then this is 40 love and I'm going to go for a drop shot because I don't feel any pressure and I will be able to achieve precision but if it's like 5 all 30 all or something like that and you feel any kind of stress anxiety you feel a bit short arm or something like that. Do not play drop shots because you will not be able to achieve the necessary precision to hit the ball so accurately. Another thing to keep in mind tactically is on what kind of ball should you play a drop shot. So ideally you should play drop shots of balls that are spinning, that they have top spin. Uh, you don't want to play or as little as possible to play a drop shot of a ball that was sliced because it's more difficult, as simple as that. So I will try to demonstrate a little bit while I rally with Urban. So, so first I'm going to play a drop shot off a ball that's the right ball. So I'll show you. First we just exchange a couple of balls. So this was the right ball to play drop shot off because I'm receiving a normal height or a low ball that is spinning forward and on this ball it's the easiest to hit a drop shot. So much more tricky is to play a drop shot off an incoming slice. So you must be very very careful and whether you want to do it or not is of course up to you but just recommending it's very very difficult. I would prefer to wait for the right situation unless of course my opponent is really out of the court somewhere and I just need to push the ball there and I don't need very high precision. So I'll try and demonstrate if I receive a ball. Back and slice. So Urban is playing back and slice. And off this ball, okay, I made it, but it's it's not easy to play a, it's not easy to play a drop shot. Because many times this will happen, you will slightly miss hit the ball. It's very difficult to calculate the amount of force off a slice. So that's something to keep in mind. Much better to play drop shots off a normal flat ball that after the bounce will of course be spinning forward or a top spin but not too heavy top spin. So second type of balls that are tricky to play drop shot off are high balls. So the problem is that when you play the ball at higher contact point you will tend to bounce high, you will tend to fly longer if you're further behind so this can only work if you're really close to the net, you can play the ball when it's a bit higher, otherwise not the best choice. So I'll try to show, we hit one ball, Urban plays a bit higher and off this ball to play a drop shot, you can see the ball is flying pretty long. We, we do one more, yeah, so we're playing, I'm getting a high and off this ball to play a drop shot. Yes, you can see in easy jogging, Urban gets it even though the ball was quite short, so very, very tricky. So I think the only option where you can play a drop shot of quite a high ball if you're really close to the service line, really short ball, so that you know you have a quite a short flight of the ball to make with the drop shot, so we try. Another situation where you don't want to play a drop shot is when you receive a dead ball, so that the ball has no speed. It's very difficult to play drop shots if the ball has no speed, if it has very low speed. It's much easier to play a drop shot if the ball has some speed coming to you. So I'll try and show one. And lastly, I want to show you the most devastating drop shot. 
So the most devastating drop shot is a wrong footing drop shot. So Urban is going to play a wrong footing drop shot and you will see how it affects the player. So even though I know what we're going to play, I do pretend that I'm going to recover properly. And yet uh, it is so difficult to change direction. So that's why even though it feels a bit strange to play the ball in the direction where the player was, you will see that this kind of drop shot is very, very effective. So this one I do reach, but as you can see, barely. And then the, the opponent uh, can handle the ball easily. So give the wrong footing drop shot a try and uh, let me know how it works for you. And uh, stay tuned for the next time when we're going to talk about how to defend against the drop shot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.